Welcome to the Think Fit, Be Fit podcast, part of the Think Fit, Be Fit podcast network, where we put the power of dynamic fitness back in your hands one mental rep at a time. Effective thinking for potent fitness. Welcome to the show. Good afternoon. Welcome to Think Fit, Be Fit podcast, Lauren. So great to have you. So great to be here. Thank you so much, Jennifer. Yes. You know, it, we we have so many if we went on Facebook and like saw our common friends list, it'd probably be like in the 50s or something, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But we've never met in person, I believe. I've um, seen you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, the 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 thing is is that I invited you because I noticed that you're doing something different uh, in the yoga space, probably in your local area as well. And like, I, I just personally have a lot of respect for people who are doing, you know, unique and interesting things. And one of the things that stands out to you about you is your yoga background. And, um, and you, we're in this like small community in the fitness space that is known as, you know, we call it RTS, MAT. Nobody really knows what that is. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you, you know, a listener of the podcast might know, but, you know, I just consider anybody who's gone through these classes and this career path as a colleague. And I'd say you even stand out as unique in this group of people who is like so resistance focused you know, we're always talking about muscles and yes. focusing on muscles. So I just think that's so cool. And that's really my main motivation for having you here because I think that is something our listeners are going to vibe with. <laughs> so I think that is great, way cool the way that you just said that. I've never really thought of it that way, but we are a part of an elite group and I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, it is. Great. It's the favorite, my favorite club I belong to. <laughs> Anyways, please introduce yourself and we'll go from there. Well, as you said, my name is Lauren Irk. I live in Louisville, Kentucky. I've been involved uh, with these, this community now for, gosh, a little over three decades. I actually started uh, in the group fitness arena at age 16, if you can believe it or not. Cool. And I uh, know, <laughs> crazy. And I've pretty much run the gamut in terms of working in health clubs and fitness centers and yoga studios and uh, rehab centers and universities and whatnot. And I've also done some presenting and teaching other fitness professionals. But yes, to your point over the years, um, have had the pleasure of meeting some great pioneers in the fitness industry and definitely have influenced my background in terms of uh, the importance of strength training and the maintenance of the muscular system. So I've had a lot of different things that I've done throughout my years of, of being in this industry. Um, currently, I'm the owner of Fitness Integrated Science Wellness Center here in Louisville, Kentucky, and we focus on muscle activation techniques, personal training, yoga therapy. And um, I also have a, I have a video service called Fitness Integrated Science TV, where I do online workouts and wellness coaching. So that's been um, a big, huge thing. And I think the thing that you're asking me to talk about today, I also have, have authored a program called Yoga Integrated Science. It's a 500-hour teacher training program. Mm. I've been uh, certifying yoga teachers since the year 2010. Mm. So um, that's been a big part of my business and certainly a big influential part of how I train. And I have you know hundreds of videos on my video platform as well, where I can actually you know help people to go through this methodology. And I've been on a quest for many years to try to educate people about the importance of muscles and how a lot of times when someone feels tightness or pain or instability, or even, you know, I can't lose weight or I'm, you know, whatever it is, chronic pain, a lot of times what they're asking for is muscle. They're having Mm -hmm. a problem with their muscular system. So that's been my scope as I'm sure has been yours for many years. So that's Mm -hmm. kind of in a nutshell, me. Cool. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So there's a lot to dig in there. I asked this question of my veteran fitness colleagues. And is there one thing that you may have focused on early on in your career that you don't, you know, think of too much now? (laughs) It's kind of embarrassing. I mean, I I don't want to date myself, but Jennifer, I can remember teaching with leg warmers on and I Uh can remember running in place. In, in group fitness classes and, you know, having ankle weights on. 
Mm. I can remember uh, the hip hop days when I would have the overalls and teaching hip hop aerobics. Mm. So obviously no don't do any of that anymore. I also was a big step aerobics person. Um, that was, you know, I was really into choreography for many, many years. Um, if you, I don't know how, how far, how long you've been exercising, but when I started, um, you know, women particularly, I had, you know, 14 years of ballet under my belt. So going into, you know, aerobics was really a natural fit for me. Mm -hmm. So I used to teach upwards of 30 classes a week when I was in college, mm. I would teach, you know, back when step aerobics was around, I would teach on two and three risers. I was teaching up to seven to eight classes a day. And my focus back then, you know, is like, oh, if I was a really good instructor, if I had really cool choreography and blocks of choreography that went really well with the music that I was using. And I, you know, I look back on those times and I think I wish I could call a lot of those people and apologize because mm -hmm. I was probably contributing to their now orthopedic health that they have today. So, you know, doing that type of stuff is, is, is not at all my jam um, mm -hmm. anymore. Um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm much more into moving more mindfully and, mm. you know, understanding how joints work from one person to the next. Mm. And, you know, it was all a part of my journey. And of course I was the one to break down first. So that's mm. kind of what, what brought me to this field, but yeah. Yeah. Long time ago. <laughs> yeah. As you were saying, how many classes you were teaching, uh, it seemed like, oh, that's no secret how she ended up on the muscle activation table. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Yeah. My first entrance into exercise was a knee injury. And I, you know, I, I've just always been, I was just very athletic and I wanted to work out in the gym when I couldn't play. And that was, that it started there. <laughs> yes. And also Tybo. I loved Tybo. Oh yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I, I love the Part part of the thing that we do on the Peach Pit Fitness is like, you know, we give respect for the where we are and like where we came from, because yes. I think you know my clients and Meredith kind of has the same experience, and you might too. That you know, people get into this. I I wish I could be that you know, 18 year old that did this kind of movement, or I wish I could be that like right before my baby weight. Um, mm. And I, I think, you know, if, if we can change that a little bit, it, it would be, you know, expressing more gratitude and excitement for, you know, just where we were and like, why do we need to make the remake, you know, why, why can't we have a whole new movie, you know, with our body? Yes. yes. <laughs> and, Absolutely. you know, yeah. And I, as you know, like if being able to show people that is just a wonderful thing that we call a job, I think what, you know, I, I, what I heard you say in your intro is that like muscle and strength kind of are this like big theme in all the work that you do. Mm -hmm. And I know like somebody hearing that on the other side may be like, yeah, duh, like you guys are both like, you know, in the industry. But I think it's more than that. You know, I think like that word strength and muscle, you know, they aren't... People might see it differently than we do. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as like our work goes. So can you go into a little bit about, you know, what strength and muscle has to do with like y your philosophy and and what you're doing at in a fitness integrated TV and fitness yeah. integrated science. Well, and, and it's and I am kind of echoing what you were talking about with you and what you you and Meredith were discussing. I can completely relate. Back when I was in my teens and twenties, and I would be in the gym, and everyone was into the the dance type of fitness, the aerobics you would look down and there were always the men in the gym that were on the weights and they were the ones that were using the machines and pumping iron. And I can remember back then looking at that kind of going, why would I want to do that? Like, it's not getting my heart rate up. I'm not, you know, doing my hours of cardio. And, um, but, and if you remember with the Kenneth, with it was it the Cooper Institute, I believe is what it was when they had all the low impact and that was what everyone did. Mm -hmm. um, Jazzercise came about. And it, you know, the, the, the bodybuilders were sort of like another culture. They were the ones that were 
you know, Venice Beach and the Lou Ferrigno's and the, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger's. And that was nothing that I ever wanted to be. But to your point, I also started breaking down. My knee was one of the first things that broke down on on me. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I can remember going and I was actually presenting in some conferences and here I was stuck with a knee injury and I had to back out of some contracts. And that really caused me to evaluate, you know, what am I learning? What am I teaching as a fitness professional? And am I effective? What am I trying to help other people with when my body's falling apart? Mm -hmm. So that really propelled me to start studying biomechanics. And when I started to understand that, you know, all of this cardio that I thought that I was doing, I was really focused more on heart. I was focused on getting my heart rate up. And my body was sort of like in the background. It really wasn't anything that I thought about. It was kind of like, well, as long as I can get through this routine, and it was all about a period of time, like I've got to get through this hour class. And it really doesn't matter how I get through this hour. I just have to get through it. It was all about time. Mm. And you know, when your body starts to break down, you realize that how you get through that time matters. Your mm-hmm. form matters. Mm-hmm. How you execute things matter. And I learned over the years that force and resistance training, which is what we do all day long as a fitness mm-hmm. professional, it doesn't have to be a, a, the guy in the gym lifting the big heavy weights to make a huge difference. Although I love that stuff too, <laughs> you know, because I know we were talking earlier and you were talking about, you know, is there resistance in yoga? You know, is there resistance in cardio? And I would say, absolutely, there is resistance in everything. If we mm. didn't have resistance, our muscles wouldn't contract. And if our muscles wouldn't contract, we couldn't move our joints or control our joints and not move our joints. So, you know, resistance is everything, whether we want to acknowledge it or not. It's always kind of been that guy that's there that we've never thought that we were teaching before. But even when I was teaching step, I was teaching resistance training. Mm -hmm. Now it was low intensity resistance training, long duration, a lot of reps, but I was teaching resistance training. What I didn't have was the knowledge about how resistance training should be put on the body and whether or not what I was doing was appropriate for that particular person or for where I was in time. Mm -hmm. And and I didn't really think about anybody that I was in in class with. It was just always about getting through my choreography. So -hmm. I think with age and wisdom and experience, we all kind of get to this place But now when I speak of muscular balance, I'm now in my 50s. Mm. So I'm seeing my body change quite a bit. And I've never missed it. I've I've taken days off, but I've never missed working out. I've never stopped working out my whole life. And my body has definitely changed. I can definitely tell that my muscles have changed, even with all the years that I've been exercising. And as I get older, I'm less concerned with cardio because I've had two knee surgeries. I have a clavicle that's not attached on one of my shoulders. I've had a lot of overuse injuries in my life through the stupid things that I've done with my body, um, push myself into. So, you know, my goal as I get older, I want to manage my weight. I want to manage my hormones. I want to keep my joints as intact as possible. And through, you know, 30 years or so of studying with Greg Roscoff and MAT, um, I realized that the maintenance of my muscular system is paramount. Mm. And all this stuff coming out now with sarcopenia and the muscle wasting disease with people that are, you know, over the age of 50. And most of my clients fit that platform. And Mm. there's just not, it's changing. It's absolutely changing. But having more education about muscle, I think is is paramount if our society in general is going to age in a a good way or or versus become frail and and dependent on everyone. Mm. Yes. Uh, Well, I mean, you're a good spokesperson for muscle helps you age well. Like that's beautiful. <laughs> I love that. Yep. And I think it's very refreshing to s- that we are starting to see the term sarcopenia. I didn't have a word for that uh, five years ago, right? Even though I kind of understood what the aging process looked like. Now that there is science that is going underneath on a molecular level to look at exercise and be in the space of questioning how does this work in like such a beneficial progressive way versus how a lot of research is done when they look at like more on the dysfunction and the deficient side. They're like, okay, so if we take movement away from this person, And so what's going to happen if they're bedridden, right? They study like 
amino acids and proteins and such when somebody is burn burn victim, mm-hmm. casted, not able to move. Mm-hmm. And then they go, okay, well, if we give them this much leucine and this much glycine, they can maintain 4% more muscle. And I just made that number up. That's not nobody else said that. Right. And and that like that's interesting. Mm-hmm. But what are what are all these other interactions doing? You know, and it's all because muscle is contracting. Yes. Right. And like, and once you see like, you know, our our clients are more functional on like a pretty holistic, I don't know, viewpoint, like mm-hmm. the sleep, the energy, the movement, uh, the quality of movement, all of that can be improved on by working with muscle, improving muscle. Oh, just beautiful. Just love yes. it. I hope everybody yes. highlights that part. Um, <laughs> <laughs> or whatever you do on a podcast. Um, <laughs> okay. I didn't realize you had a 500 hour yoga continuing education program. That's massive. I don't know that people can like completely, you know, understand, but Usually it's 200 hour and 500 hour. Yep. And so how long does it, would it take a, a yoga teacher to go through a 500 hour program? Uh, depending on the way that that program was set up. Some, yeah. some programs are done quickly and they'll mm-hmm. do the intensives where you can get a 200 hour in record time. There's a lot more online things that are popping up all the time. Some people go away to uh, some sort of off location and they'll study something mm. intensively. My program, it would probably take three or more years to finish all of it. Um, I've, I've, never, I've never done any kind of training where it's been this speed through everything and we meet one day a week for you know however many months. I mean, it's been my experience, especially the type of information that I'm teaching is that it's too overwhelming. People mm-hmm. just can't, they, they need time to digest it. And I'm, and I'm trying to teach something all the things that you're speaking about is, is, is so, so true. This idea that muscle and resistance training is important has only come about in my lifetime. The past five years or people are really discussing it. Mm-hmm. People are, I'm, I'm seeing more and more clients doing less what we call cardio and mm-hmm. really wanting to participate in strength training. There's actually businesses popping up in my area all over, especially with female owned businesses where people are focusing so much more on strength training. Mm. When you start to transfer that over into a yoga training, Mm -hmm. it's like telling someone that's, you know, there's no Santa Claus, you know, it's just, it's, um, it's a very (laughs) difficult concept to wrap around. And the people that I get that come through my course usually have their minds blown pretty early on. Mm. So, you know, I, I like to take my time with it. I like to try to, you know, allow people to, to understand it. And it's really about kind of absorbing yourself into it. Can't imagine the first time that you took MAT. It's the same thing. It's kind of like, mm-hmm. whoa, I didn't realize that muscles don't really stretch. Wow. Yeah. And I've been <laughs> stretching myself into this pose for like 20 years and I've never gotten any further, but I didn't know why, you know? Yeah. So there's a, there's a lot of education that goes into it. And, and I just <laughs> try to encourage people not to be in a hurry to get through it. Yeah. That's, uh, that's amazing. I really am a, what is it? I, I push my audience and my clients and myself to always like review, you know, always go back to these fundamentals and, you know, all the, and so for me, the fundamentals are, is the muscle. How can I learn more? How can I apply it? And sometimes I really can't apply it. Like I just, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, information that is just you know, for my perspective, you know, it gives me more meaning or yeah, whatever. And uh, so, man, I've, I, I kind of want to dig into that. So you, you're, you still very active in yoga, like it with, with your app and the TV platform and the, the wellness center, correct? Yes. Um, yeah. I, I used to have a studio called Yoga Integrated Science po- mm-hmm. pre-COVID and mm-hmm. I had a pretty healthy group fitness program in addition to all the personal training that we were doing. And I'm sure everyone has their story about what happened during COVID, but we were shut down in March and um, that was it. That mm-hmm. was, uh, as I went through COVID, I, I just realized after, you know, 40 years of teaching that I just really wanted a break from that. And I'm not mm-hmm. saying never, but right now I'm not doing 
group classes for the public right now. So mm -hmm. I'm really enjoying this online platform because I have so many things that I've choreographed and taught and come up with mm -hmm. my own methodology for so many years. And it's been wonderful to have all this recorded mm -hmm. um, in, in, in many different formats. And so what I've noticed is um, I'm actually, my teacher training has been on hold for two years. Mm. And I've had a lot of people that I've been talking to because it's like, are you going to have it? Are you going to have it? And it's always like this whole COVID thing. So we're <laughs> finally back on track this year to get started. And I've got a good group that are, that's with me now. And it's been really cool to say, hey, when you have to do your obligatory practice hours, I now have an online portal that you can go to mm. and they can watch it. They can stop it, start it. They can do it in the middle of the night. They can rewind it. They can really practice the methodology because, you know, a lot of the people that I get, you know, you and I might talk about some of these biomechanical terminology, like flexion, extension, sagittal plane, rotation. These yep. people have never heard this stuff. They've never mm -hmm. seen anything. They've just memorized a bunch of poses. Mm. So it's really good for them to be able to, you know, go back through and, and learn this in practice because, you know, once they've kind of been taken through that portal, they won't see things any other way. So mm -hmm. there's many, many blessings, I think, that's come out of this period that we've all been through. Many mm. blessings that we would have never otherwise thought of mm -hmm. had we've been forced to stop and look at things. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I to yeah, I absolutely appreciate it. You know, when, when you were saying like that people don't understand, you know, how to, like when they hear flexion extension, and then, you know, trying to apply it as a movement teacher and a movement specialist. Mm -hmm. So right there, that's one of the core issues of the entire, like across the industries, fitness, yoga, any, you know, any, anything, even, you know, I talked to, I'm a dedicated Pilates student, like cool. as, as a, a mover myself. Awesome. And I'm constantly in awe that, is so much like Pilates has not like moved into this like decade, let alone like, <laughs> um, because you know, a lot of the teachers they don't understand the resistance that they're asking, they're looking for extreme ranges, and you could call them poses, extreme ranges, a certain amount of time, a number. And this also goes back to like the whole cardio and aerobic thing. Yeah. I was literally thinking about this this morning at the gym where it's like, what really matters? And when it comes to my time in the gym, the actual time to me doesn't matter because you know I'm, I block it off, I enjoy it, and I make sure that it's for me, which as you know, as an exercise professional is actually kind of hard. Hello, Jennifer here. If you're enjoying this episode and are hungry for more mental reps about exercising efficiently and effectively, make sure to check out the other shows in our network, Peach Pit Fitness and Fitness for Consumption. We explore it all from celebrity workout trends to peer reviewed research. Focus on what really matters, synthesizing accurate information into meaningful action for you and your clients. Enhance your fitness mindset and process by listening to all Think Fit Be Fit podcast at thinkfitbefitpodcast.com or on your favorite podcast player. Thanks for your support and enjoy the rest of the episode. The people in the industry that are teaching movement and being like a part of accessible wellness care to our clients, really, it, and, and not understanding some of these the the basic functions of anatomy and mechanics it's something like i think we're going to be able to change but especially you like you're actually in that and have been for a while changing that so you know what does yeah can you speak to like what a more mechanics approach can offer like on the client side or like the teacher training side the person receiving this information are you speaking in terms of yoga? Is that what you wanted me to discuss? But yoga or <laughs> it's just like more about that teaching with the anatomy and the mechanics mm -hmm. versus the poses and the choreography. Right. Yeah. I think, you know, we as fitness professionals, if we're going to call ourselves professionals, we need to adopt the language of a fitness professional. And I think over the years, I've always heard from, you know, maybe other people that are brand new in the industry, 
that that those kind of words are too hard or that, you know, clients don't want to know these things or, you know, I want a baby. I've had a lot of social media people that I've worked with that have said, can you say this in a way that the general public would understand, you know, because we sort of, we, it just becomes our language. And I'm like, what do you mean? This isn't easy. This is like this baby fight as I can get. And, and then there's people that, you know, know way more than what I know. So I feel like I'm in the baby fight field still after all these years, but I have learned throughout the years that people are empowered with knowledge. Mm. And, you know, I have definitely had people, I'm sure, come to me and say, I've had, I've presented at conferences where I've gotten an evaluation. She was too technical, too mm-hmm. much anatomy. I want to just move. Okay. Like those people may not be for me, but for me, I want my clients to understand why I'm making these decisions for them. I want them to be involved. I want them to be informed. And I've always said, I mean, you know, I both talked about our injuries. I think this is what brought us into this field. I've learned more how to take care of myself by understanding how a knee works or understanding how to place forces on a knee or understanding how the nervous systems work and and why am I having pain and why am I compensating and why am I continuously having these injuries that spread throughout my body? Mm. It's forced me to have to investigate. So one thing that Maya Angelou always says, when you learn, teach. Mm. So for, for, for me, learning has been a passion of mine that I will continue to do for the rest of my life. And I feel an obligation to the people that come across my tutelage. You know, I want to try to pass that knowledge on to them because the more that they understand why they're doing something, mm. they, they're more invested in the, in the, in the results. There, mm. there, a lot of times it's been my experience that when people understand things from a mechanical sense, it's empowering to them. I start seeing them talking to their kids, their husbands, their wives, mm. talking about the things that they've learned. They bring me articles. They're more interested. And they tend to stay with you longer because there's an element of trust involved. You know, there's actually a methodology that's, that's, that's happening here. And if you are going to elevate yourself as a fitness professional to work with people like doctors, physical therapists, communicating with other health professionals that either maybe you're, you're treating one themselves as, you, as that's your client, or mm-hmm. maybe your client is in communication with other health professionals if you can learn to speak like them, if you can interpret someone's MRI or whatever, immediately there's an element of trust and they're going to be more apt to work with you and listen to what you have to say so that even when you're not working with them, they start to understand what they need to do on their own. Mm -hmm. And that's ultimately what we want is we want to help people. We want to make them as independent as possible Mm -hmm. so that they don't maybe need us all the time so that we can make room for the next person. But we also, you know, we want to send them on their way to when they, when they look back, they can say, you know, I really learned a lot from that person. Mm-hmm. That's, that's the greatest gift you could ever get is someone coming back and saying, you know, when I studied with you, I learned a lot and you really changed the course of, of my life and how I take care of myself. What a legacy to leave behind, you know? Mm. Oh, love it. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. And it's also something that we continuously come back to uh, amongst the podcast and I'd say it's like a signature of what we do. It brings me back to these memories I have of my strength and conditioning days. So I've spent most of my career in strength and conditioning. And (laughs) so I was uh, working with the soccer club and I had this whole pre session routine. I don't call it a warm up. I don't call it stretching. I don't. (laughs) And it's um, and I would sell it as like the transition. I'm like, you guys have to walk through this door with intention, with you know, warm, active bodies, and that's how we're gonna do it. And then, you know, there's always one. There was a, uh, there's been so many athletes, but somebody wants to know like, how can I stretch this? And I'm like, oh, stop what you're doing, everyone. I will tell you why not. And, right, right, right. And I always have the, I have this like Velcro analogy. You know, I'm like, you know, the Velcro, it goes like this and then it stays right. put. It's like tension. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. I, I, I always wonder, I'm like, how many people were like grasping that? Or was it just like that one little bit of information got them to the next step and definitely look at those all the all the time that I spent on the fields and stuff in in uh yeah 
Yeah. And Jennifer, you don't even know how many people you probably touch. There's a saying that we always have used in yoga. When the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Mm. So, you know, you may have you know dropped a seed in some of your athletes and mm. they may come back later and just say, you know, that thing that you said to me, it was just like this, this thought that I had in my head for all those years and not propel me to do something else. So that's great that you did yeah. that. Well, I know um, a lot of the athletes I've worked with over the years do listen to the podcast. And I have this like image in my head of like my MAT business becoming prolific because of all these kids coming back and being like, I want to be an MAT specialist, but has not happened yet. Anyways, (laughs) there's not enough of us. That is definitely an issue. Yes. Yes. Let's move on over to the app. So it's technically an app, but it's like a channel, right? Like I'm so interested because I love the idea of people continuing and integrating fitness and technology into their lives in a very meaningful way. The opposite of meaningful for me is, I'll just call it out, things like Peloton, who are more about choreography, but Mm -hmm. only to get data. Like I think they are an entertainment and data company, not necessarily a fitness company. Yeah. So I love the idea of having real fitness with integrated feedback, collaboration. Yes. So you, you've you been enjoying your time as a creator, it sounds like. <laughs> I have. I have. And you know what, Jennifer? I never thought that I would like this medium. I didn't. I mean, I've, I've seen apps. I've, I've seen them on my phone for years. And ugh, I, just, I, I don't want to have that. You know, I just wanted to be in the gym, working on my equipment, you know, be in the studio with a room full of people. But I'm an introvert by nature. Um, mm. I, I can be extroverted when needed, but I I, I like my alone time. Mm. So it's been really kind of a cool thing to be able to kind of expand and shrink according to what I need to, to do. And I think that you're going to see over the next few years, most fitness centers are going to need to develop some sort of a hybrid model mm. to where they can, and also education companies too. We can't mm-hmm. always expect people to travel to come see us. So mm-hmm. for me, mm-hmm. you know, all the years that I've taught in person, I've taught thousands and thousands of classes, but it always was about whether or not that person could be there at that time and be present with me on a regular basis. And that's always been the challenge. And I know that you can relate to this as an MAT. One thing that we deal with quite a bit with our clients is that you know we get them on our table, we treat a bunch of muscles, and they and they they legitimately they they feel better. They can see that muscles got stronger right there on the table. But then what? They get off the table, and we hope that they follow some of our advice, so that when we see them again, if you're not able to train them during that time, you hope that things are going to hold. So, you know, I remember when I was taking my RX internship with Greg, I for whatever reason, every time we would meet, which was back then, the RX was set up differently. It was not online at all like it is now, but we would have to come back every three months. And I was always holding everything that we treated the previous time. And everybody in my class was like, why are you holding? What what are you doing? What are you doing? Well, Mm -hmm. I was doing this methodology and I'm going to call it integrated isometrics with progressive strength training. Mm -hmm. It was very biomechanically based. So having the ability now to have all of this on an app, I've made videos anywhere from 15 minutes all the way to an hour. I do some live classes. When someone hops off my table or if someone you know, comes out of my personal training session or yoga therapy session, I actually have homework that they can do mm. so that they can actually practice some of these skills. So I'm trying to not only have all of these videos to choose from and Pilates and yoga and bar and strength training and therapeutics and luxury type things, but I'm also... It's enabled me to communicate with them during the week. Um, I put together a huge programming guide each week for everyone that has all these blogs that I write about to try to actually educate them. The people, you know, they say you find your tribe. So the people that I have Mm. on my app are interested in the things that you and I are. Mm. So I talk about, you know, various therapeutic routines. I explain them about anatomy. I explain them about muscle works. We go into some, you know, basic nutrition to help them. And then I come up with a weekly plan with includes you know, why I've chosen things and new videos that I'm putting out that week, new live classes. So what I'm noticing is that people are, that don't even live near me can mm-hmm. now work with me. They can, mm-hmm. they can communicate with me at the end of the video. They can send me emails and I've actually been able to help more people. And one really cool thing, I'll just end with this, you know, since I've been doing it, my results with MAT have been 
so much better. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I was having a situation where I was keeping having to, you know, treat the same stuff on people. And I'm like, you know, you, you've got to do your core work. This is you know, your trunk rotation is really weak. Every single time I see you, the people that are doing this app, which is much more convenient, especially people that are afraid to go out in public still, they come back and they're strong. Mm. They understand how to progressively strengthen. You mm -hmm. know, it's a very distinct, detailed work that I teach them how to slowly put resistance on their body. And um, it's just been a really, it's been a really cool thing. And I, you know, I have a lot to learn. I have many more things that I want to do on it, um, but it's, uh, it's been really cool. So thank you for asking about it. Oh, that, yeah, that is so cool. And let's not forget to tell people where to go to in a, work with that. The, yeah, you brought up the term isometrics. I don't know if we've talked about isometrics in a while on the podcast. So let's uh, dig into that a little bit to finish up. No, a little light subject. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so your core work, your isometrics, your strength training, they're all, they all come together mm -hmm. in a program. Yeah. Can you speak a little bit about the process of assigning? Well, you spoke to it a little bit, but more about like the isometrics. Sure. So, you know, I, we had talked a little bit about, you know, was yoga strength training. So mm -hmm. I've come from that background of I'm going to move myself into a position and then I'm going to hold it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, typically when you see someone in a yoga pose, or obviously you don't know what they're doing when they're in a yoga pose. They could be doing anything. They could be feeling anything. Mm -hmm. But depending on what you wanted to focus on, how they were pushing into the floor, what they were engaging at that time, you're basically holding a joint position. So, you know, and the definition, as we know from isometrics, it's no change in length of muscle fibers. So we achieve a specific position. We have muscles fighting some type of resistance, whether that's pushing into the ground, pushing into the bar, maybe holding something, maybe it's just one body part holding against another to where that muscle has some sort of stimulus mm. that causes there to be some sort of a contraction but it's, an, it's, a, it's the right type of contraction that it doesn't overpower the muscles, mm -hmm. nor does it underpower. So those two, the muscle and the resistance can meet in the middle, if you will. Mm. So when you're working with an isometric, obviously, if it was the weight was too heavy, it wouldn't be an isometric because the weight would overpower you, right? So when you think about doing an isometric, it, you're, you're dealing with still, stillness, holding something for a period of time. Mm -hmm. And it's also about learning to squeeze your muscles, which is something I've been talking about this for uh, several years now. You know, you see people in the gym doing their reps and they're just flying in and out of positions or they're, you know, going through their machines and they're just trying to get done so they can go do their next thing. But you never see them really taking their time Mm -hmm. to go through the phases of a repetition mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, the intention of what I'm getting ready to do, knowing how far my joint moves, using that weight to move through that available joint range. And then when I get to the end range of that contraction, holding that and squeezing my muscles. Um, and if you're using a lot of load, that's hard to do. It's mm -hmm. also hard once you squeeze the muscles to not collapse back out of it and lower the weight down with a, with a consistent <laughs> controlled manner. And that's, you know, weightlifting 101. So to me, isometric should be the first place that we start with people, you know, how teaching people, this is, this is your joint. This is mm -hmm. how it moves. This is how fast you, or how far your joint moves. And this is how we're going to make the muscles that bring this motion about show up. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you squeeze your pecs? I was just working with my dad this morning and I had him on a decline chest fly and I, and I, he was going real fast and I said, okay, dad, stop. And I lowered the weight. And I had him push the, the, the um, two pads all the way together and just hold it there and squeeze it. And he told me that was the hardest exercise I've ever done. Mm -hmm. It was actually half the weight, mm -hmm. but I made him slow it down and actually hold that contraction for at least five to six seconds. When he was finished with it, he told me that his shoulders, and I'll just quote him, were lit up is what he said. <laughs> so I think it, isometrics can be a way to you know, teach the body how to control the joint range that it actually has mm. and actually teach you how to use your body when you're exercising versus just, you know, going through the reps and not paying any attention to it. So I, I love okay. using isometrics. Mm. Yeah, I do as well. I think, yeah, I love that they can teach us about our body. They teach us about our movement and they can be the stimulus Mm -hmm. And they can be part of the exercise. Uh, absolutely. I mean, 
you know, really isometric is usually part of a movement, but um, I hope for like the people listening, it's just more, you know, fuel to kind of just look outside the box, right? Yeah. Because it's not normal in the fitness industry for, you know, for someone to say, stop and feel mm -hmm. something internal, they might say, stop or slow it down and get the burn. And again, like they're looking for that, like, you know, I'll never forget like that RTS moment where they were, where Tom was like, muscles are more, more than burning calories, like gas in the car. Mm -hmm. You know, your car does much more. And I, that was a big aha moment for me. I was like, yeah. oh my God, I can leave now. That's all I need. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's not what happened though. Yeah. And um, it's, you know, it's kind of like to, to give somebody that shift is very valuable. I've personally seen people turn around their pain and their fitness outcomes with a little bit of MAT and a lot of isometrics, you know, because yeah. because isometric is a tool that you can use in your exercise, pre-exercise, post-exercise, or when you're feeling like crap after, you know, sitting too long. Mm -hmm. So massive tool. I hope um, all the listeners can kind of grasp that. <laughs> right. And, and Jennifer, and it's something I didn't mention really fast, you know, you know, sometimes movement is not an option. Sometimes mm -hmm. people, you know, they have, uh, maybe they've got a fusion or maybe they, their body has naturally fused something or they have joint changes mm -hmm. and maybe load is not even that much of an option. They've got a bone on bone situation. You know, doing an isometric can be just as, as, as you know, progressive to getting someone better than just going out there and, 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 and moving through, through an available joint range. So definitely for improving range of motion and joint stability and lowering pain, isometrics are great. Mm, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, they are. Yeah, they are a painkiller actually. Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, so interesting. I could go in so many ways here. I like already have an idea for having you back. I love having I my, my colleagues back, you know, the best, the, the, the highest downloaded episodes are the ones where we're connecting on this level. And, you know, I, I want to talk about successful active aging, you know, for my own selfish purposes, really. Some of these, some of these subjects are more for me, but I'm glad everyone enjoys. And oh God, it just feels like a little fireside chat. Um, <laughs> you know, and like the whole thing about how we can view the nervous system in a different way is like such an interesting topic. I'm sure we could jam about that for a while, but please tell people where to find you. And if you have anything extra special going on. Yeah. So my website is just fitnessintegratedscience.com. So that kind of show, shows a little bit about my business in Louisville and also my teacher training. There, there's a under under one of the tabs there, you can find Yoga Integrated Science Teacher Training if you want to learn more about that. I'm also on fitness, um, I'm, excuse me, Facebook and Instagram as well under that same handle. And then my app is just called fitnessintegratedscience.tv and it's available on Android, iOS, and Roku so Amazing. that people can watch it. Wow, that's so yeah. cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Big leap. Big leap. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that is that. Yeah, that's amazing. It really is nice and refreshing to hear that because, I mean, how many times have you cringed turning to the the Amazon channels for fitness or like the yeah. you know the audible even the audible ones or you know all the apps that all the streaming apps they have like their own platform. But I mean, that's amazing. So. Yeah. Well, you know, people, a lot of people that are older that I, that I'm, that I'm servicing, they love being able to see it on their television. So it's been great. Yeah. There's that too. Yeah. <laughs> <I know. laughs> like following around the small device all yeah. the time. Yeah, my iPad. <laughs> yeah. Fabulous. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. And I can't wait to publish this and share it with everyone. Thank you so much, Jennifer. And thank you for this wonderful service that you're bringing to the fitness community. I really admire everything you're doing. I appreciate you. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for listening and being a part of the Think Fit, Be Fit podcast network. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast with your friends and family. If you're interested in further resources, check out or visit our website, thinkfitbefitpodcast.com.